It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, they come around every two years and they ask you for their vote and they say, put me in uh, uh, Harrisburg, I'm going to work for you, okay? Well, today, folks, let's find out if they're really working for us. I'm referring to Representative Tara Tuhill from the 116th Pennsylvania Legislative District and Jerry Knowles from the 124th Pennsylvania District. As you know, they've been on the show a number of times, but we always hear, what are they doing? What are they doing? Well, Tara and Jerry, how are you? It's so nice to have the both of you on the show. Thank you for having us. Okay. Sam, well, it's always Jer a pleasure. Jerry was coming on. He says, I need help, so get Tara on as well. He just wanted, you know. <laughs> and we sit like this on the House floor. We actually sit right next to each other. Is that so right? We're sitting just as well, you we have do my on condolences. The floor. I'm sorry to hear that. No, I'm <laughs> She's to kidding. my left. She's, okay. <laughs> yes, a little bit to his left. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you coming on the show. What I try to do, um, uh, as you know from many shows we have, is try to inform inform the, the public as to what our, our political people are doing. And, and unfortunately, you, you get a bad rap, okay? Everybody wants everything, and then when you start doing things, then they get upset, you know, so you don't know which way to do it. And, and, I, and, and I, first of all, no matter what party you're in, I applaud anybody who's in politics today. It's a tough job. And uh, sometimes you get criticized when you really shouldn't get criticized. You're doing your jobs. But I don't want to, you know, uh, what, what I want to talk about is some of the most important things that are, uh, that are on the table today. Um, let's talk about, first of all, uh, Governor Corbett. Um, I've said on this show many times, uh, I like Governor Corbett. Uh, I like him because he's an honest man. Uh, when, he, when, he ran, when he was Attorney General, when he ran for Attorney General, he said he wanted to do certain things, and he accomplished them. Second term, he said he wanted to do certain things, the accomplishment. When I asked him when he was running for governor what he wanted to do, and he's, he's doing what he said he was going to do in campaign. And unfortunately, uh, you know, um, uh, he's maybe not the greatest uh, public speaker or whatever, but he's doing his job, all right? And I don't care whether he's an R or D. The point is the man is doing his job. How do you feel about that, Tara? Well, it's important to note when I came in, I'm now going into my third year. Uh, so I came in at the same time that Governor Corbett did. And at that time, we had had uh, nearly a decade without an on-time budget. Uh, we were recklessly spending, borrowing money. Uh, we had a deficit of $4 billion. Uh, so we really, from just the way government was doing business, uh, it was so poorly run. Uh, and we were it was just a really bad state of affairs. So now, at least in the last two years, we've been able to rein in government uh, and, and work more like a business. So our legislature ended up turning over uh, to becoming a Republican legislature. And, uh, you know, we're looking at, we, we, we haven't raised taxes and we've had a budget on time. And that's, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. So we've made a lot of inroads. Uh, your, your response. Well, I, I would say that uh, Governor Corbett has had a difficult job because of the things that, uh, that Tara had mentioned. And uh, I, I always tell people that, and believe me, I, yeah, and Tara will agree with me, I believe, I've not always agreed with the governor on each and everything. You know, we, we don't, we have to represent our districts. And there are times when it, when, that we may disagree uh, with the governor, and, uh, but he is, uh, he's doing a good job. I, I believe that, uh, make no mistake about it, that Governor Corbett is doing what candidate Corbett said he would do. Now, like it or don't like it, I don't see how anybody... Jerry, that, that's what frustrates me. It frustrates me to the nth degree that the public, the general public, okay, that are being brainwashed by these ads that are coming out, and, and you know, it sounds like I'm campaigning for him. No, the man is an honest man. He said he's going to bring the state in the area. He's, gonna, he's helping small business. New budget that we're talking about is, is helping small business to do that. We're going to talk about welfare and transportation. But he said what he's doing, and now what's happening is I can see the other side, okay? Um, and, and if it was a Republican or Democrat, I'd say the same thing. So uh, how the Democrats now, they want that power back again. And, and you know, you see these ads that are out about uh, Governor uh, Corbett that probably 99% of them is not true. And when the governor comes on the show, I hopefully will address that. But when you look at the budget, remember, you inherit a $4 billion debt. Four billion. And part, like, one of the largest reasons for his unpopularity in my district, uh, because we're very pro-public education, yes. is we had that 
Obama, President Obama's federal stimulus money, and we came in on that first budget, and we had that loss of the federal stimulus money because it was gone. It was a one-time surplus. It was a shot in the pan, and and that's what you know it looked like. You weren't having an increase to education, so the education funding issue is probably the uh, biggest point of contention in our district. Uh, but we were able in our districts to get more education funding than ever before. Uh, and that's something that you fight for individually in your district and according to the needs of your schools. Jerry. I, I would couple, I, I would just add on. To, Sam, one of the things that people, many people don't realize is we, we, the proposed budget is $28.4 billion. All right, when you talk about that, 40 cents on every dollar is spent on education. 39 cents on every dollar is spent on welfare. 7% of every dollar is spent on corrections. Now, if you do the math, that's 86%. So you've got 14% that deals with all of the other things that you deal with. And everyone's vying for that, that percent. Well, isn't it a fact, okay, Dan Muser said it, Lieutenant Governor Colley said it, this is the highest ever that education's getting in the budget. Is that correct? That's true. Okay. State so, dollars. Okay. This is yeah. the most the, state dollars yeah, that they've right. ever got. So you're, you're, we're getting more money now in, in the Hazel District, in, in your district, correct me if I'm wrong, than you ever did before. So what's the problem, Tara? Well, the, obviously we have needs. Our, our needs continue to grow. Uh, school safety is obviously a huge issue. Um, the, in the Hazleton area, we have English, English as a second language. Uh, the gang issues in the schools. I mean, there's so many issues. There's so many youth that are at risk. And teachers, their jobs aren't like the way that it used to be when I was in school and you were in school. Uh, it's a very, very different environment, uh, dealing with the kids and their behavior and uh, the the, la the actually the PSSAs as well, like the demands that are put upon teachers. So it's not an easy job, uh, and they do need funding, uh, and it's just really how that that money's allocated. But someone has to pay for it. When you're doing the budget, uh, the taxpayers are paying for that, and it seems that the the tax base is is getting smaller and smaller, unfortunately. And and what I would say, Sam, it was our caucus, the Republican House, that uh, came forward in the last budget. And there were some things that were taken out of that budget, and we put them back in. And, and you know, we all, it, it, nothing, nothing that we do matters unless we in government, and I don't care if it's the feds, the state, the local, the school districts, we need to be certain that we have control of our spending. I mean, you know, you could, it, it, it's, it's, the money just doesn't keep on coming. We can't print money in Harrisburg. We can only spend what we have. When do you think... Probably I'll never see it in my life. Maybe my grandchildren will never see it. When do you think the nonsense and the bull crap and all this bull pol political nonsense and power stuff is going to stop and we start looking at running the state as a business instead of political hacks all the time? I you think we are running the state as a business. It's just not popular. Well, yeah, um, yeah and so, so you're not popular, so now you have another, I, I love a debate, and I think if, if I was on the other side, if I wanted to come after, you know, the governor, I would come after him in, in concrete issues, but I see a lot of politics, 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 mm -hmm. and that's why people have a dis, distaste for politics. Talk about the facts, the most money we ever had. We come back, we're going to talk about privatizing the liquor stores, all right, and then what happened with the lottery? Okay, where according to what Dan Muser said and according to what the Lieutenant Go uh, uh, Governor said, this would have been a bonanza for the state of Pennsylvania. I don't know, true or false. Folks, I'm talking to Representative Tara Toolhill and Representative Jerry Knowles. Um, as you know, I always welcome anybody who wants to come on with another side. Believe me, I do. But folks, please vote for people who are qualified. Don't vote because Tara, because you like her, Jerry, you like Vote because, you, they're, because they have something to offer. If not, put somebody else in there. And what about term limits? We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Luis Sancho, folks. Uh, remember 24-7 SSPTV.com. And folks, for those of you who have participated in the last month in our, our uh, surveys, um, they weren't conducted by us. us we were conducted by independent surveys uh, on uh, local television viewing. Uh, and um, I got to tell you, 350 people were called and um, 
92% uh, of them uh, responded very favorable to local news 13 versus our competition. Uh, and we're very, we're very pleased about that. Uh, also, my show um, and the girls' show and all the other shows we have ranked number one in their time slots. I appreciate that very much. And speaking of the girls, folks, the girls um, uh, have a, a beautiful uh, cup here, a coffee cup or whatever, tea, whatever. Uh, and the profits of this are going to the Breast American Cancer uh, for breast research and so if you want to buy a cup just uh, go to our website give us a call we're more than happy to uh, uh, all the profits go to uh, the American Cancer Society. My guest representatives Tara Tuhill and Jerry Knowles. J Tara briefly because I want to get into your ch children youth um, uh, um, committee you're on uh, privatizing the liquor stores for or against. I did vote for the privatization of the liquor stores, uh, which moves the government. Uh, it should be the government should be on the enforcement end of it, uh, liquor control enforcement, making sure people aren't underage drinking, making sure that people aren't, um, you know, having access that they shouldn't have. That was more what the government should do. This is an outdated system that we've had since prohibition, and it is costly, uh, and it's something that I did vote for to get the government out of that business. Um, and there's a lot of cost savings with that. There's uh, 3,000 employees that are salaried, pensioned employees, and then I think another 1,500 uh, that are part-time employees. Some of them make working at the register $21 an hour. Uh, and it's just, government is so fat, and there is there's so much waste in government. Um, and a lot of these individuals, we did make sure that uh, the people in the liquor stores now, at those state-run liquor stores, they are going to have um, job training, they are going to have extra points on civil service so that they can move and transition into another job. Uh, they'll also be able to work at the privately run liquor stores. Uh, so now you as a businessman, you can, as a beer distributor or um, as a small businessman, you can now own your own liquor store with, and sell wine and spirits. And I think that that's the way that it should be. It should be for the small businessman. One question I'll get to you, Jerry. Um, Senator Udichak says it's gonna cost 30,000 jobs in the state of Pennsylvania. True or false? Well, in in a lot of our discussion, it was a very partisan vote. Uh, and the Democrats on the House floor in, in the House of Representatives, all they were talking about was the loss of jobs, the loss of jobs, and someone has to pay for those jobs. The, the government uh, can't subsidize jobs just because people want to have employment. In other states, uh, you can go, uh, and people, people want this. It, by popular demand in this state, people want to be able to go buy um, wine and liquor and have choice um, and, and have the way that it is in other states. So it's going to be more customer friendly. It's going to be um, something that the people want. Jerry? John Udicek is a great guy. We work with him on many projects, but he's all wet on this one. Um, and they say modernization. Everyone agrees yeah. that the liquor stores are outdated and that they need to change, but it's like, how much change do you want? The, uh, I, I did, uh, my wife and I ran a small business for 10 years, and I can tell you that there are very few things that government can do better than the private sector. We have no... There's yeah, no, my we, vote on that. There you go. But we don't belong We don't belong in that business any more than we belong in So you in think any, it's a good thing? Absolutely. I voted for it. I, uh, I, the biggest concern that I have is that as it moves through the process that it will be deleted or diluted. Is that the word? Diluted too much and that we're going to... You know that I want it. I want full privatization. Okay, Jerry, um, stick with you. Transportation. What's happening with transportation in the state? Well, transportation. The uh, the governor came forth, and uh, you know his proposal basically would uh, would uncap the uh, the ga or the oil franchise tax. Uh, basically, uh, then the uh, the Senate came along. I think the governor's proposal was somewhere would have generated somewhere near 1.8 billion dollars a year. Whereas the Senate proposal, I think, was 2.4, 2.5 billion, uh, they want to increase. Uh, they want to increase fees in terms of your driver license, your registration card, and they also want to put another surcharge on any moving violation that would take place. And a hundred bucks, I mean, and I got to tell you, Sam, I uh, I got to look long and hard at what they're at what either the governor or what the Senate wants to do. You know, we currently spend $6.5 billion on transportation every year. That's a lot of money. I mean, that's a lot of money. Let's take a good look at where that money's going. It drives me crazy the amount of money that we send to Philadelphia 
uh, in terms of uh, SEPTA. I mean, we send there, I, I think currently, we send them like $600 million. And if, they, if this thing goes through, they're going to get like another 200. And, and their budget, I, I mean, their total budget is, uh, I think it's somewhere around $1.3 billion. And we already give them $600 million. You know, I, we, we, are, we are responsible. The ridership revenue is somewhere, I think, in the area of 39%. And we give them, I believe it's 46, 47 percent. We send them to run that, you know, to run that uh, that mass transit system. You know, we we uh, we got to take a look at that. Tara, you're a new committee, or you're on the uh, chair, children youth committee? Yes, and I was very excited to be appointed to that committee, um, and especially in light of the Jerry Sandusky scandal and everything that happened with that. Um, we're looking at child advocacy centers. So when you have a child victim, um, there, you know, anyone under the age of 18 years old, you're able to bring them to this child advocacy center where experts are going to be there, the district attorney, um, a, a counselor, an investigator, and they take a one-time testimony from that child when there is an allegation of abuse. And it's said that had we had um, out at Penn State, had there in that county, had there been a child advocacy center, um, the Jerry Sandusky scandal would not have gone on for as long as it did because all those children would have been coming to one central location with one central complaint about the perpetrator. Um, so it, it really, um, when you have something on a mass scale going on like that, it, it kind of, it helps to have a centralized location. So we're looking at um, mandated reporters, uh, people that are in the schools, public officials, people when someone finds out or there's some allegation of abuse that you're mandated to report that and uh, to child line. So it's we're going to get education packages out there so that the community knows there are our children that are are being abused out there um, and that we as a community need to come forward and do something about it and speak out about it make sure those kids get the help that they need so if i if i could jump in i will tell you that uh, tara has really become the regional expert on the, that issue she has taken a leadership role and uh, i'll tell you that uh, she really uh, she has a passion for that issue, and, and it shows when she talks about it. It shows when she talks in caucus about it. And, and it's, uh, you know, I've, I've only been a legislator a short time, uh, more, a, a little bit longer than her. But I've been down there a long time in, in, in one capacity or, the, uh, or another. And I can tell you that uh, Tara is uh, representing her people well. And that issue, she's just... And speaking of uh, issues, you know, like, Jerry, you have your uh, district, and they have wants and needs, and you have your district, and they have wants and needs, and sometimes, you know, you don't always agree because there, there could be, but you agree to disagree. Uh, folks, I'm talking to Representatives Terry, Tara Toohill and uh, Jerry Knowles. We come back. Uh, what's happening with the welfare situation and the, the fraud um, uh, that's happening in the state of Pennsylvania, what has been accomplished? Um, and remember, folks, uh, you don't want to listen to everything some, or believe everything maybe you may hear uh, about certain politicians until you really know what they do. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Hassan Show, folks. I have uh, Representatives Tara Toohill and uh, Jerry Knowles on the show. Accountability, accountability, folks. Uh, we have to account for everything we do, but sometimes you wonder if the... Um, if government does that. Welfare fraud is rampant. Uh, people are fed up with it. They're disgusted. Uh, th th it's just sad. Tara, what's going on? Well, you know, 39 cents out of every taxpayer dollar goes to welfare. Uh, and there's definitely abuse in the system. Uh, and, and people come to both of us representatives in our town halls are coming up and telling us what they see in the grocery stores, what they're seeing with the access cards, people with multiple app access cards, people buying televisions with cash, getting into nice cars, uh, and then using these access cards to buy all their food. And it's so grossly unfair. Um, and, what, and what are you doing about it? Here's an example of trying to get something done in government. Uh, last year, we were able to get one of my welfare bills through the House of Representatives, and then it got stuck in the Senate, and it never passed. Uh, so Why? now, just because that the senator that 
is on the Health Committee, uh, Health and Human Services in the Senate, doesn't agree with um, criminalizing misuse of those access cards. And we were trying to well, uh, get that to be a criminal. Is he Democrat or Republican? She is a Republican, yes. Mm, I mean, uh, but it's a, a, a different approach. And mm -hmm. the Senate is a four-year term, and they don't have to move on things mm -hmm. as fast. Um, so Representative Knowles, um, if you want to touch upon yeah, that. I, I will tell you that, first of all, there, we, we need to be certain that when we talk about the, uh, the 39% uh, or 39 or 40% dealing with welfare, a lot of that stuff is for our senior citizens and a lot of that stuff, or a good part of that stuff is for people with genuine needs. Yes. We don't want to hurt those people. Absolutely. We don't want to hurt those people. We understand that there are some people who need help. We want to help them. Uh, we're concerned about the, uh, about the person who is abusing the system, the person who has two access cards, and maybe neither one of them are in their name. What I want to do in concert with what the, I'm, I'm, I'm having uh, staff do some research, I believe that if someone gets caught with an access card that is not theirs, okay, if that card was not reported as lost or stolen, the person who's owns that, the person who has, who has that card loses it. They lose that card, that's the long and the short of it. They lose the card, they lose the benefits because they're walking around with something that they're responsible for. The second thing is that, you know, I, I just think that, uh, I just think that it's just out of control. I mean, you can't imagine the stories that we hear. And is it just Schuylkill County? Is it just it's Hazleton? Yeah. Because but, people aren't complaining about it in other parts of the state, and they're saying that there's reforms, and now we're hearing uh, that the reforms that we think were made in welfare are not what they had seemed the, to be. The other thing I'm looking at doing, Sam, is that uh, Senator Argyle had introduced legislation, and basically it requires uh, felons uh, who uh, it requires felons to take a that, that have access cards to take a drug, a test. drug test. I want to expand that. I think, and there's some discussion about the constitutionality. I think if you're getting benefits like that, I think that you should be you should they should be able to randomly check you in terms of in terms of using drugs. I think that you know I. I don't want these people using these cards out there buying drugs. I'd be curious to see how the Philadelphia district uh, representatives would feel about these things and also the bigger cities to see how, how supportive they will be. Uh, just curious because it's, it's interesting when, when you give things away all the time, uh, these people vote for you. And when you start taking them from them, then they, they don't vote for you because they're, they're getting something for nothing. And I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but it's curious to see how how this, how corrupt this becomes, okay, Tara? And, well, we need to stop this cycle because <laughs> poverty is a cycle, it's cyclical, and these children are growing up in homes uh, where they think it's okay to be completely dependent upon sure. the government, yeah. and they're going to grow up and, and do the same thing. So we need to make sure, you know, there shouldn't be lifetime welfare benefits. There shouldn't be unlimited <clears throat> amounts of children unless you really deeply are in need because you're either on disability or you're unemployed or you need welfare benefits to help you in a time of need. But you shouldn't be um, in that time of need for five years, 10 years, a lifetime. They live off this system. They live. I think we all agree, we want to help people that need help, especially the seniors uh, who get clobbered all the time. And the, but see, what happens is when you start doing these things, then the opposite side, whether you're R or D, if it was reversed, well, you see, they, want to, they don't want to help people. You don't want to help people. You guys are mean and you're terrible. Meanwhile, people are out there working with two or three jobs and are respectful. Uh, they stand in line and, and they can't afford different <coughs> things but these other people are ripping through access cards and, and actually thumbing your nose at the system. That is totally disgusting, Tara. And it, it, it's something that we have to address. Uh, and people come up all the time. They say, I work. What I get drug them? tested at work. What do you work. tell them when you say that? Well, you, well, when we hear from them that things aren't going the way we're trying to make them go, it is frustrating. Um, but hopefully together we're going to be able to get more information on why there hasn't been a change in yeah, welfare in Pennsylvania. Why? We, we become, Who do you go to for that? We are becoming 
a country of entitlements. No question about it. That's and, why and, President Obama won. But Pennsylvania doesn't have to be that way, uh, so we're going to well, fight that I, That's fight. my opinion. Yeah. Okay, if you give more entitlements out, I'm going to vote for you. There's no mm -hmm. question about it. Meanwhile, the country's going down the toilet, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And people are, the, the poor seniors, I think seniors who have worked in this country, who served the country, deserve health care. They deserve all this stuff. They worked for it. They made mm -hmm. the country what it is. These young people that don't want to work, it's, it's a shame. It really is a shame. Well, we, we need to shake it up. We need to change things, well, uh, and we're going to continue. And I'm glad to see my... that some of our reg our legislators are working. Okay. And, and Sam, I want to thank you for your presence in our That's community. It's always a pleasure. It really, I mean, yeah. for you yeah. to be down yeah. uh, down my way, it's people uh... wonder why I'm still a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, will change that. Yeah, yeah, we'll see why I'm still a Democrat. Uh, you know, it's so hard when you have to talk about facts. And, and like you said, you, you mentioned Corbett. Oh, they don't even know the guy. Uh, they just listen to different. They have no idea what he's all about and what he's doing. All I know is that substance is substance. Tara, when you ran for office, you said you were going to do certain things. Jerry, that's why you were reelected. Because you said what you were going to do, and you did it. I really thank you for coming on the show. I know you guys are busy doing nothing, sleeping all the time in Harris. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Tara, thank you, and thank Jerry, you. thank you very much. You, Folks, you can get in touch with them anywhere. If you're in the, the Jerry Knowles district, you know how to get in touch with them. Tara, Twill, she's all over the place, so you'll see her anywhere. Uh, you know, just make sure that you, uh, you know, check the facts, folks, okay? And let's quit the nonsense, politicians. Let's, let's, let's talk about facts. Uh, SSPTV.com, Sam at SSPTV.com, my email, thank you so much for the comments and those comments that give me a little shot once in a while, it keeps me straight. Uh, don't forget, get your cup, the girls cup, all the proceeds go to American Cancer Society, we'll see you next time.